In the last video, we learned about DNA nucleotides, the monomers that are used to build DNA. In this current video, we'll see how nucleotides are strung together to make a DNA molecule, and that will give us insight into how DNA can be replicated and how it stores information, the two key characteristics of the genetic material. Recall that DNA nucleotides contain a 5-carbon sugar called deoxyribose, and that the carbons are designated with a numbering system, 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, and 5 prime. There are four different nitrogenous bases that attach to the 1 prime carbon. Thus, we have four different types of DNA nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. We'll abbreviate these A, G, C, and T. Regardless of which nitrogenous base is attached, every DNA nucleotide has two other key features. First, the 3' prime carbon has an OH group attached to it. When a DNA strand is being built, that OH group is the site where the next nucleotide will attach. Second, the 5' prime carbon has a phosphate group attached to it. When a DNA strand is being built, the phosphate group of the incoming nucleotide will attach to the OH group on the 3' prime end of the DNA chain. Let's see how this works. In picture A, we see the Watson and Crick double helix model of DNA. What produces this double corkscrew shape? In picture B, we see a two nucleotide DNA strand. Human chromosomes are made of tens to hundreds of millions of nucleotides, but regardless of whether we are adding nucleotide 3 to a two nucleotide DNA strand, or we're adding nucleotide number 3 million and 1 to a 3 million nucleotide DNA strand, things work the same way. Let's orient ourselves. Looking at nucleotide number one, the thymine, we can see the 5' prime phosphate group, and we can see where the 3' prime OH group used to be. But now the 5' prime phosphate group of nucleotide number two, the guanine, is connected. Nucleotide number two also has an OH group on its 3' prime carbon. We can thus define two ends to the DNA strand. On the 5' prime end, there is a free phosphate group. On the 3' prime end, there's a free OH group. If we add a third nucleotide, let's say another guanine, the 5' prime phosphate group of the third nucleotide will attach to the OH group on the 3' prime end of the DNA strand. The third nucleotide will then have its uh, OH group as the 3' prime end. Each time another nucleotide is added to the growing DNA strand, its phosphate group will attach to the OH group on the 3' prime end. A fourth nucleotide will attach to the 3' prime OH group. A fifth nucleotide will attach to that 3' prime OH group. A sixth nucleotide, same. So too with the seventh nucleotide and the eighth and the eight millionth. We can read the sequence of the nucleotide uh, strand. Reading in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, the sequence is thymine, guanine, guanine, or 5' prime, T, G, G, 3' prime. Reading in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, the sequence is guanine, guanine, thymine, or 3' prime, G, G, T, the 5' prime end. Knowing directionality is just as important in reading genetic information as is knowing directionality when reading English. There are many different genetic processes. Some read in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, others read in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. You won't have to know them all, but do pay attention when a directionality is pointed out. So far, we've built a single strand of DNA. But DNA is typically not single-stranded. DNA is usually double-stranded. What does the other strand look like? For the DNA strand in the picture, the other strand looks like this. This other strand has very specific structure. First, it shows complementary base pairing with the first strand. That is, specific pairs of nucleotides form hydrogen bonds with one another. Adenine pairs with thymine, and cytosine pairs with guanine. These are the only combinations of nucleotides that can form stable base pairing. The complementary base pairing rule, A pairs with T and G pairs with C, is a fundamental rule that governs pretty much all of the dynamics that DNA exhibits. It is probably the most important concept in all of genetics. We call the two strands of a DNA molecule complementary strands. The other bit of structure specificity is that the AT and GC pairs 
only form stable hydrogen bonds when they are upside down relative to each other. This results in the two complementary strands running in opposite directions to one another. If one strand is running 5' prime to 3', prime, the other strand will run 3' prime to 5'. Prime. The opposite directionality is described as anti-parallel. So DNA is a double-stranded molecule. The two strands are very specific relative to one another. They are complementary and anti-parallel. In the next few videos, we'll examine how this specific structure sets up the replicability and information storing ability required of the genetic material, remembering that structure determines function.